Hello Whiskey Cats, Brandy Buffs, and Calvados Connoisseurs. Welcome to review number 136. I think it's 136, I sure hope so. Um, today I have a very interesting uh, review planned for you, and that is of a Calvados. What's a Calvados, you may be asking. Although I think a lot of you would know, uh, however, many of you may not. Calvados actually is an apple brandy. Um, or also known as a cider brandy. So it's made from apples. Cider, making a cider, making an alcoholic uh, light beer style, similar uh, sort of idea, kind of, kind of like an apple wine, but uh, not quite as uh, powerful as a wine. So making a cider and then distilling it, which produces a particular kind of eau de vie. Eau de vie means unaged, uh, brand new make, basically new make, brandy. So before something can be called brandy, it's called eau de vie in French, in France. <clears throat> anyway, so anyway, Calvados, here we are. This is, I guess, the most famous brand of Calvados uh, called Boulard. And um, it's not quite their most um, expensive variety. It's maybe the second most. Uh, however, it's very interesting to know that all of um, all of it, I think all. Well, anyway, uh, the Boulard Calvados. This is the XO. There's quite a few different varieties. XO means it has aged for a minimum of six years, but probably a lot longer than that. Now, what got me interested in Calvados was a particular uh, reviewer who often mentions Calvados as a tasting note. Uh, so I should pay homage to him, uh, to Ralphie Mitchell. Thanks so much. I'm glad that I picked this up. I hope that it's as good as uh, uh, as it seems. As it seems like you like Calvados, but anyway, let's get that opened. So my first time with Calvados, with any kind of an apple liqueur, it's not a liqueur. Actually, this is an apple liquor, apple apple uh, oak aged spirit. It's a brandy. What an aroma. You can smell the apple right from the little, tiny little um, neck of the bottle there. Now, don't mind the name on the glass. Let's get that poured. So this is the Boulard XO. Boulard Calvados XO. Save myself a little bit for another time. It's 40% ABV. This is a 50 milliliter bottle. And um, it's a product of France, of course. Uh, Calvados is, I believe, only made in Pays d'Auge. Pays d'Auge is a particular area in France. It's in Normandy. And um, coming from England, it's basically directly south of Brighton. Uh, so if you draw a line south, you hit the coast there. That's where you'll find the region where Calvados is made. And um, uh, Boulard Calvados Distillery, the Boulard Distillery, is located at the basin of the Touk River. Touk? Touk River. Um, sorry if that's not quite the right pronunciation. I, my French is a little rusty. Now, anyway, a little bit of history as we let that um, breathe a little bit. Oh, my. Very interesting. Uh, so it was founded by Pierre-Auguste Boulard in 1825. Uh, they were on to the fifth generation in the family. Uh, now it's Vincent Boulard who's running the show there. He's the fifth generation heir. And, um, uh, well, uh, as I mentioned, the apple orchards. So, so the apple orchards are located in the Pays d'Auge. And uh, it's quite a famous brand. It started being exported in the early 20th century and I think 80% of their capacity gets exported in fact. They're the market leader. Um, as you're watching the uh, the little pictures I have prepared for you, you'll notice two people. Uh, Vincent Boulard, uh, his picture appears a couple of times and, uh, and then uh, Richard Prevel who is the seller master uh, which would be probably kin equivalent of the master blender uh, and Vincent Boulard would probably most likely be uh, the uh, the business person behind it 
Uh, although he may actually do some of the distillation himself, I wonder. Anyway, so that's the story, 1825. Uh, let's get a nosing, a tasting, and we'll talk about the finish. We'll add a bit of water and see what happens so that I really have no idea what is going to come out of this glass here. Uh, anyway, we'll have a very short word from the YouTube sponsors there. Welcome back. This is Blard Calvados XO. So it's aged a minimum of six years, most likely much longer than that. Um, in fact, brandy, as well as cognac, which is a kind of brandy, uh, are not legally allowed to put um, an age statement on the bottle of their whiskeys, their whiskeys of their brandies. Um, one exception would be when they put the year of um, uh, the year of distillation, uh, which seems to happen on occasion if there's a particularly good year. Now, this is a single distillery. So we can call this probably single Calvados um, or single cider, single cider Calvados. If I want to think about single malt, so single cider or single apple. Anyway, single cider Calvados distillery. And a single cider Calvados. That's what I'll call it anyway. This has a very unusual nose. I smelled apple from the bottle. I wonder if I still do. Uh, however, I don't really smell necessarily apple coming from the glass here. Yeah, there's a light apple bouquet coming through there. So if you look at the bottle, uh, I'll only get the very lightest um, sort of uh, spirits that are uh, being, uh, what's the word? Uh, to, moving into gaseous um, form. <laughs> anyway, so the, the liquor gases that are coming out of there are very apple-y. But here I've got a much wider uh, mouth. It'd be nice if I had a brandy snifter, but I think the Glencairn should do just fine. It's very floral. Definitely apple blossoms, and yet also there's a nice rich caramel as well. And interestingly, a little bit salty, a little bit saline. Um, now, the distillery is located at the basin of uh, a river. However, it's very, very close to the ocean. So you may as well call this a coastal distillery. Yeah, touch of salt, touch of mineral. And then deep in there, and you really get your nose in there, you get a little bit of that caramel. Hmm. And just an interesting bouquet of uh, uh, very light floral and herbal spices. Really, really interesting. A little bit of apple mint. So, so lovely. Much more delicate than scotch. Mm. And there's something also very musky here. Not must, musky. Kind of like apple skins. Hmm. Anyway, it's time for a taste. I'm really excited about this. Extremely smooth for 40%. This is very different. But a nice sweet sour beginning very tart sweet and tart it gets sweeter and sweeter T -t a touch of dryness there and um, there's something almost kind of like uh, the smell of um, a cellar 
that slightly, slightly damp, slightly, um, let's say, marble or rock, um, rock, kind of like a cave, um, <clears throat> even bricks. And again, extremely floral. Apple blossoms, maybe a bit of daisy, in fact. I shouldn't say in fact. <laughs> and the finish is also very gentle, very friendly, very sweet, floral, um, with some icing sugar, some hard candies, hard fruit candies. A little bit of licorice spice too, in fact. <laughs> now, I swear to you, I have not been eating licorice of late. There's been a lot of lic a lot of uh, whiskeys I've tried lately that I've mentioned licorice or licorice spice. Anyway. I'd be interested to know about the produ uh, production method. Are they using just the flesh? Uh, are the skins also uh, used? Um, how about the uh, the core? It's very lively, very fruity, of course. There are apples in there. There's also something almost like pear. So a very sweet apple. Um, I wouldn't want to guess at a particular um, varietal uh, as a tasting note, but golden delicious. I guess I just did. <laughs> hmm. I'm very quickly running out here. There's a little bit of um, toasty oakiness coming through there. Now, these should be aged in um, likely limousin, uh, or what's the other one? Um, oh dear. Limousin, and da 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 da. Uh, or uh, uh, tron troncé, uh, limousin or limousin or tron uh, troncé casks. That's the area where the uh, the oak grows. Um, the finish is very very long, and inter interestingly. That toasty oak, nut, uh, oak uh, toasty oak note <laughs> comes through. Something slightly nutmeg-ish about this. Nutmeg. Not so much cinnamon, but nutmeg. Hmm. Well, that's about all I can say about the finish. I'm going to add just a little bit of water there and see what happens now. Round and round we go. Not a whole lot left there, but that's enough to taste. Hmm. There's much more wood influence now when, when you add water. And yes, licorice spice is coming through here now. And the nutmeg also. This 
this smells very much like a particular perfume that I have a very strong recollection of. And it's actually a French perfume. There's something akin to uh, Chloe Narcisse uh, coming through here, which I think is no longer made. Hmm. Very rich now. Much richer, much fuller, and much more complex. Hmm. Okay, let's give that a taste. We'll have one more short advertisement right here. Welcome back. This is Boulard Calvados XO with water. The wood event really comes up with water. A lot more of that um, cellar sort of flavor. A lot more uh, saline, in fact. And again, this nutmeg-esque flavor is also coming through. It's becoming a little bit nutty. And the finish, of course, now, it seems a bit, quite a bit drier than before. Still very much wood-influenced. Now, if I had to pick another little bit of a, a flavor, again, I would say something kind of like a quince jelly. A little bit of a salted caramel again coming through on the palate. And then very much this very dry apple skin sort of a flavor. Um, and again, that, that full wooden, full wooden uh, flavor that I'm feeling here, that nutmeg and, um, and some, maybe a little bit of raw, raw almond, not really almond, or like a, a raw hazelnut, or perhaps even, um, or what are those ones that uh, squirrels like to collect? Not chestnuts. Well, a little bit of chestnut. Uh, acorn. Yes. That's it. A little bit of acorn. Um, acorn jelly, which is actually very popular here in Korea. Uh, which sounds like it's a candy, but no, it's not. Uh, it's more like... Um, it's more like a... Something like head cheese, if you're familiar. Uh, okay, anyway. Yeah, so acorns, chestnuts, nutmeg, caramel, saltiness. Um, and I'm still tasting that now, and I taste a little bit of apple as well. And the apple that I'm tasting now, even though it's long gone, uh, is a quite tart, uh, very dry one kind of like an unripe Granny Smith, not just the Granny Smith, but the ones that aren't even ready yet. Uh, or if you pick off uh, some crab apples from a tree uh, in the springtime, well before they're ready, uh, you'll be in for a mouth drying, uh, very, very, very sour event. <clears throat> okay, anyway, so that has been uh, Boulard Calvados Pays Doge XO. And it was excellent. <laughs> oh, very nice. Now, uh, this is going to be difficult for me to score. It's very different. It's my first Calvados. But if I want to compare it to whiskeys uh, and put it at a peg where I would say, yes, that's about where it is, uh, we're going to go with 89 out of 100. What an event. Very, very interesting.
Hmm. Oh, yeah. Okay. So 89 out of 100, that's the Whiskey Whistle Whiskey score for Boulard uh, Calvados Pays Doge XO. And, um, well, what can I call this one? Uh, Apple Delight. Apple Flower Delight. Okay. Well, I think that's a very worthwhile experience, and I suggest that you try to gather up these experiences of different types of spirits made from different types of fruits and grains so that you can broaden your horizons. Um, and now, thinking of that, I, I realize that there's a lot of foods that I need to go back and taste, a lot of spices, uh, a lot of um, uh, flavors that I need to revisit so that I can reawaken those um, spots in my tongue that recognize those flavors. So I'm going to try to do that this winter. Anyway, thanks for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed that. Stay tuned for something else that's very different coming next. Take care now.